What's up? What's up? It is Wednesday, October 11th. Um, we got a lesson review from Tuesday. I was not here, so we got the lesson review, and then we also got the quiz um, number two review. So let's handle that business. Um, this is going to be due on Thursday, so make sure you get all this stuff turned in. Uh, get that figured out. Some people are like, I'm not going to be here on Thursday. All right, well, then figure out how to get it turned in on Wednesday or whatever the case might be, okay? So just handle that business. Oh, by the way, Pause the screen. You already know what to do. Pause the screen if you need that agenda, okay? Make sure you get that. All right, moving forward. Um, I do want to talk about this for a second. So empathy. So um, it's kind of crazy type of thing. It's kind of a crazy type of thing. Sorry, I think I said that twice in there. I'm not editing it out. Sorry. <laughs> um, but it's just this idea of realizing if Mr. Farr um, stops and gives time for students to make up things, then it creates a tidal wave of work to do beyond just where I'm already at. So I already have grading that I'm trying to work on. And then I'm like, okay, all this late grading comes. And students oftentimes what they want to do is they're like, hey, I turned in my assignment. I need you to grade it and turn it in right now. And the reality is I love you and I want to get this done for you as soon as possible. But your assignment's probably one of a hundred or so like there's there's so many because we're grading current stuff and then we're going back and grading late stuff and because i said oh you can resubmit i'm grading resubmissions as well so just remember um all of those things and and have empathy on your teacher and how long it should take your teacher to respond and and how long it should take them to grade because it probably will take I would say 24 to 72 hours to get everything all caught up. I told um, uh, my student teacher, Mr. DeFoya, I was like, hey, it's cool to, to do this and have this, this makeup opportunity for your students. And at the same time, it creates a ton of actual work from the moment that you say. So this is why I just want y'all to have empathy for teachers because this is why a lot of teachers are like, no, I don't want to do late work because it just creates a ton of work. And let me tell you this, let me tell you this. I'm gonna get up close and personal. If you wanted your work graded already, then make sure to turn it in on time. That word may come out hard or harsh, but the reality is if you would have turned it in on time, you wouldn't be wanting your work to be graded now because it would have been already graded at the time that it was graded originally. So just 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 put that just put that in there. Just, just in there somewhere. Keep keep that with you somewhere. Put it in your they used to say put a feather in your cap, right? Put a little put that in your cap like somewhere. Duly noted. Like just write that down. Like, hey, because there's some students who are like, this isn't even a big deal to me. I already everything's already graded. I'm cool. I'm cooling. So just just know that. All right. Let's go ahead and move forward. Um, just make sure you check everything in Canvas. You should know where everything is and what's going on and, and where your grades are at, okay? Um, I've been wanting to send out a parent square this week, but I just didn't feel it was appropriate until I have the grades updated again. So um, that probably will end up being Saturday now at this point, now just looking at how everything's working. Um, cool. So hopefully everyone turned this in already. It was already due. I've already sent messages. For some people, I've sent duplicated messages. So make sure you got that turned in. Um, this is the last day I'm going to talk about this. Make sure that this thing looks like this when we leave. Um, right? Okay, that's how it should look. Plugged in nice and neat. Okay? And then um, by this time, everyone should take home your scientist if you want it. On on Friday, I'm going to end up start ta I'm gonna start taking them all down. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to keep the ones I need. And then all the rest of them are going into the round filing cabinet. So just feel that. All right. Let's just talk about this for a few minutes, okay? So we wrote this all down and we said forces, uh, right? They can either be balanced or unbalanced, all right? So let's just go down this balance train. So if forces are balanced, right, the motion of an object does not change so again if the force is acting on my coffee right here my coffee it will remain in this motion which is no motion until until acted on by an outside force right but if my coffee was just floating through space like this it would keep floating through space until acted on by some sort of outside force right so again when um, forces are balanced the motion does not change um, the forces acting on the object are are equal in magnitude opposite in direction so equal in magnitude right we said that and then opposite in direction so the forces acting on something if it's balanced 
are equal in magnitude and you may not know what that word magnitude means, right? So magnitude is like size, strength, distance, or quantity. And so in this case, we're talking about the size or strength of the force. So the size or strength of the force is equal in magnitude, okay? So um, if it says, if, again, if we say it's equal in magnitude, we mean it's equal in size or strength, right? And opposite in direction. That is what we would call Newton's third law for every a. Uh, uh, for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. So again, they are equal in size or strength, or that's what we call magnitude. By the way, I would definitely write that down. So you can pause it here. You can see it right there. Equal magnitude is equal to size and strength. So when we talk about magnitude, we're talking about size and strength, right? Um, then if we go to unbalanced forces, that unbalanced forces will result in motion. So if the forces are unbalanced, right, it's resulting in, in motion. And since it's changing direction, then that means we have acceleration. I know we stack in definitions. Now stack in definitions. So the forces acting on the object are in uh, the forces acting on an object in opposite directions are not equal in size and strength. So if this is going up, right? Boom. Gravity is trying to push down. But a hey, the force going up is is stronger or um, in magnitude or larger in magnitude. Does that make sense for the folks? Hopefully you guys got all that. And again, I would write in magnitude. And here I'm going to put this up. Pause the screen if you need it. OK, pause the screen if you need it. I'm taking it down. Cool. I definitely would write that in there. OK, write that in there. All right, so let's move forward. Now, when we talk about frame of reference, this is a system that uses coordinates or background objects to establish position or to measure the movement of a point in space. Now, um, we kind of talked about this on the video last uh, yesterday, so I'm not necessarily going to go over it super deep again. But um, so if you want, if you want to redo that, hey, that's on yesterday's video, so I'm not going to go super deep over that again. But just realize like depending on your point of view like where you are located in space will depend on how you are able to observe the motion of the objects um around you okay so just understand that and that's your frame of reference so being inside of a car is different than being on the sidewalk being able to observe both cars even though the motion on both of these is exactly the same but the way you're able to observe it is different all right cool so let's move forward um, let's just talk about this. We did not talk about this on the last video, so we'll talk about it now. I don't know if you, if the video is still going, but I'm going to keep recording. Hold on, I'm going to pause. Apparently, it was still going. It looks like the video is frozen as far as I'm seeing, but I'm just going to keep recording. You can hear my voice. So make sure on here, this is where most people lost points, and it's because they put the definitions. So force as it pertains to newton's second law is about it's measured in newtons and then now we're going to talk about if if the net force is zero um its motion will not change so if the forces are balanced it will not change um a larger force causes a greater change in motion okay so the larger the force the greater the motion of the object will be now as we pertain to mass mass is in grams some people put mass in kilograms that's okay either way it just depends on what formula we're using right and then the greater the mass of the object the more the force required to change the more force is required to change its motion and we understand that so the more mass something has the more weight something has which means the more force i'm going to have to use in order to get it to change its motion okay now acceleration here is a change in motion, speeding up, slowing down. That's just definitions. But now we get down into the heart of it, which is when the mass of the object increases, acceleration decreases. So the more mass that's in this coffee, right, the more we fill this thing up, then the acceleration of it, when I try to throw it, is going to be, is going to go down. Okay. So when the force of an object increases, right, then acceleration increases. So that also means the more force I apply, boom, then the more acceleration this this will take. Now, let's talk about these over here. So a train is on a track, boom. And another train with several cars comes in and bumps it, bam. So that train moves, right? So that train moves up out the way right there. So when that train moves, we would say what? What would we say about that? What, what just happened there? We would call that acceleration. And the reason we would call it acceleration is because we have unbalanced forces cause the train to begin moving, right? So we have a change 
in speed, right? We have an increase in speed. A student conducts an experiment where he drops two balls off the table to determine the force of the impact. The ball with the larger mass makes a bigger dent in the sand and then the ball then the ball with the smaller one. So this describes Newton's, hopefully you got this second law because Newton's third law is like for every action force is equal and opposite reaction force. It doesn't really talk about mass in there. So hopefully you got that. So the increasing the mass of the moving object increase the force exerted on the sand, right? And we're gonna we'll talk about this formula here in just like to I think on Friday we'll talk about it because we have a quiz on Thursday. So a dog is chasing you at a speed of 10 meters per second to the west. You are running away from him at eight meters per second to the west. Now we would call this velocity, and the reason is because we have speed and we have direction. So if you have speed and direction, we call that velocity. Now, some people want to say acceleration, but the only problem is in this scenario, we don't show a change in speed. It just tells us the speed that we are going. And so if we just continue on that constant speed, it means the forces are balanced and we don't have acceleration. Also, we never changed direction. We only went west. That's why acceleration means I have to increase or decrease my speed or I need to change direction. And we don't see that happening in this scenario. Okay, cool. Let's move it on forward. Um, I'm going to talk through this video. I'm going to talk through this slide. So you pause it as you need to. Yes, draw everything. So scalar quantities only have a magnitude. So they only have a size or strength or just a quantity. That's all a scalar quantity has. So speed is a scalar quantity. And the reason it is, is because it only tells us how fast the, the object is traveling or how much distance is the object covering in a certain amount of time, right? So in this case, this gentleman here with the top hat has traveled four meters in one second. Again, he has traveled four meters of distance in one second. That's all it's telling. So speed is just telling you how much distance did you cover in this amount of time. So over here, this, this airplane, this jet is traveling 250 meters per second, right? And to be honest, that's not like super fast for a jet. It could go much faster. All right. But anyhow, that's speed. So that only has the magnitude, right? Only the, the, the number or the quantity of distance that's traveled in a certain amount of time. Now, a vector quantity is going to have two things. It's going to have the magnitude, right? And then it's also going to have direction. So in this case, velocity has two things. It has speed and it has direction. So not only is it how, how, much, how much distance was covered by the object and how, much, how long it took, but then also what direction that was heading in. Finally, it looks like my camera's working again. I don't know if it was working that whole time. If it is, it is. If not, you just got my voice. You just got my voice. So let's finish talking about uh, velocity and vector quantities. So again, velocity, the difference between speed and velocity is like this. I could say this. We could be observing the same thing. Me and the police. Me and the police are observing the same thing. So I say the car was traveling 100 miles per hour. That would be a, over here, that would be over here. That would be speed. 100 miles per hour. Now, the police, on the other hand, they're going to use velocity. We got a suspect in a car driving 100 miles per hour northbound on Highway 99. Now, see how they have given it. They've given two things. They gave, not only did they give the magnitude of, of how fast the, the, the vehicle was traveling, but they also gave the direction in which the, ve the vehicle was going. So that's velocity. And me just saying 100 miles per hour, that is speed over there. All right, I believe that is actually everything for today's lesson. Make sure you're ready for the quiz that we are having on um, Thursday. And then that is all. As usual, there was quiz slides in there since, I think, Tuesday. And then also um, there was a quizzes in there as well. So I'm going to try and have that for you guys each time. Uh, quiz slides and quizzes because it, it I feel finally figured out how to use that system to make them quickly. And I think it's uh, it's a good review. But just so you know, the same information is in both. All right, y'all. Peace.